Hello everyone. Before I start this, let me say I do not hate women. People should not treat women wrongly. Women should not be treated as slaves. So I hope we all understand that. I do want to speak about marriage. I do believe God made marriage. I think most people who want to be married want it to be successful. So if someone made marriage and you want it to be successful, don't you have to go by that person's rules? The person who made marriage. Let's say I buy a phone and um, this may not be a very good example. Let's say I read the manual and it tells me not to dump my phone into water. But for whatever reason, I place it into some water. Why would I be surprised if my phone stops working? Why would I be surprised if damage happens to my phone? I went against the rules. I did not obey what the manual told me. I believe if you want a successful marriage, you have to go by the rules. Even if your spouse is not going by the rules, I believe it is good for you to go by the rules. Let's say you are feeling your spouse is taking advantage of you. Let's say you feel like your spouse doesn't love you. So you may believe inside of your mind because of these reasons and more, I'm not going to do this for him or her. I am not going to do that. I will do this and that. And that is not right. At least try to do your part in things. If your spouse is not doing right, make sure you are doing your part. Even if it seems like there is no point, even if it seems like it is hopeless. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. And I like how it says it in the translation. Wives, yield, yield to, submit to, be subject to your husbands as you do to the Lord. So the same way you submit yourself to God, submit yourselves to your husbands. Does that mean you need to worship your husband as you do to God? I don't think that is saying that. Let's look up the word submit, accept, or yield to a superior force or to the authority or will of another. In short, and 
I am going to say it like this. The husband is the boss. Does that mean you have no say? Does that mean you can't speak your opinion? I believe time should be set aside for you to respectfully express the way you feel. Even though you have to submit to your husband, I don't think this is saying that, you know, you have to close your mouth and not say anything and let a man abuse you and mess like that. I don't think this scripture is saying this. What I believe this verse is saying that the man, in a sense, has the last say. Should he consider what you are saying? Yes. Should you express the way you feel? Yes. But ultimately, you are the one that needs to submit. Does that mean you are a slave? Does that mean that you are like a roach or a rat or someone that should not be considered? Why would you even think that? If a man treats you like you are nothing or like insults you very badly, that is wrong. I think the problem is some of us were raised in abusive families. So since our experience is abuse in families, when we see what the word says, we may see it as danger, like, hey, I can't submit to a man. I can't love my wife because if I do it, that person is going to take advantage of me. That person is going to hurt me. That person is going to do something wrong to me. And we must not think in that way. Like I said, if you want a successful marriage, you have to go by the rules of the person who made it. If I go by my experiences in life and try to put it on marriage and not go by the rules of marriage, how is it going to work out? The Bible tells me I should do this and that, but I am doing the opposite, but I am praying to God wondering why why is my marriage so bad? How about you do what you have read? Verse 23, for the husband is the head of the wife. Here we go again. I believe this phrase like uh, is pretty much saying the same thing in verse 22. For the husband is the head of the wife. The man is in charge. The husband is in charge. Even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. In verse 23, it is saying, The husband is the head of the wife. And some people may say, Kevin, you don't know what you are talking about. I just read to you the verse. It's not that I don't know what I am talking about. I believe you disagree with the Bible. Let me say this as well. If you don't agree with this, you don't have to be married. If you want to be in control if you are a woman and you want to be in control of everything uh get with a man don't get married 
be in fornication, have sex, have kids, stay in that lifestyle, then die and go to hell. Or, if you want to do it right, don't get married and don't have sex. Let's go to verse 24. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in some things, no, in things that I want. It doesn't say that. Let the wives be subject to their husbands uh, once a month or only when the husband buys me gifts, only when the husband does what I want. No, it does not say that. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands and everything. You have to submit to your husband and everything. You may say to me, Uncle Kev, I see what you are reading, but there is no way I can submit to my husband and everything. When I was younger, my dad did this to me. Uh, my cousin uh, took advantage of me. You know, I had so many bad male experiences. And that may be the truth. But if you engage in marriage, you have to go by the rules. In marriage, the husband is above you. You have to submit to him in everything. Let's continue, please. You can argue with what I am saying. You can say I am wrong. You can say I am ignorant or I look down on women. Think what you will. But what makes no sense to me is that some people Pray to God to get married. They may pray and pray and pray. You know, they may go to church and have other people pray for them. Like, as it seems, some of them place so much effort into getting married, but once they are married, as it seems, some people want to do their own thing, which makes absolutely no sense. You want a good marriage, but you don't want to go by the rules because you are in fear. Like, if that is the case, shouldn't you pray to God, God, please help me to become a good husband, to be a good wife. You know, this and that happened to me in my life. I have no trust in men and women. Please help me to be the way that I should be. I think that is the way that you should do it. Perhaps you should ask God to heal you first, then get married. If you are very broken, if you are very messed up, but you want to be married, I believe you should try to get healed first. Because if I have it in my mind, women just want money, they just want to take advantage of men, blah, 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 blah. How will I be in marriage? I believe I would treat whoever is married to me wrongly. I hope this makes sense. Let's continue. Let's go to verse 25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church 
and gave himself for it. And this is the part I want to get to right here. The Bible commands husbands to love their wives. If you love your wife, you are not going to beat on her, right? You are not going to treat her like a dog. You are not going to purposely embarrass her wrongly. You are not going to take her in public and uh, in front of her face, speak very badly to her and embarrass her. No. You will be a, a good husband. A good husband. You will be good to her. You will be kind. You will be gentle. You are not going to treat her like an, like an animal. You are not going to treat her as a slave. Slave meaning, uh, I think, um, I think there is a saying nowadays that some women may see, may say they are not a slave. And I think they use that wrongly. When I say slave, I am speaking like a slave, like being whipped, being abused, being hurt very badly. Like some people use slave, the word slave very lightly. I think some people use it uh, in a way meaning that the man wants you to cook and clean and do stuff like that. That is not a slave. If the man is providing, and let's say you are not working, what is wrong with you cleaning? What is wrong with you cooking? Like, if you have kids, what is wrong with taking care of the kids? Like, does that make you a slave? But I believe a good husband will want to protect his wife, want to embrace her, you know, care about her thoughts. Of course, we need to be respectful. We should not say things very bad things to each other so if your thoughts are really 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 bad maybe you should not announce them a good husband is not going to treat his wife as something worthless or something like a good husband is not going to um uh, be very very bad to his wife of course let me say this disagreements may happen things may happen to where the two may have to separate for a while but the two should not be very bad to each other let's continue let's jump down to verse 28 so ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. And this is very important. Basically, treat your wife based on how you want to be treated. So if you want to be treated well, Treat your wife well. Are you going to insult yourself? You should not. Are you going to do harmful 
harmful things to yourself. You should not. If you won't do those things to yourself, you should not do those things to your wife. So as you can see here in these verses, men should not abuse the power he has over his wife. As you can see, there is an order here. We have to go by the order. Women should not be afraid to submit to their husbands. Husbands should not be afraid to love their wives. If both people would go, will go by the rules, I believe things will turn out well. Yes, problems may happen. Misunderstandings may happen. But if everyone has a mind like, hey, no matter the problem, no matter the misunderstanding, I am commanded to go by these rules. So even if there is a misunderstanding or whatever, like how can the enemy, how can demons drive a wedge in between the two? Because no matter what, if both people have the mind to do what is right, even if there is a misunderstanding, we are still going to do what is right. If you have childhood trauma, I guess teenage trauma, adult trauma, you need to be healed. You need to ask God to heal you. Um, some people may have been raised in single mother homes and they may not know how a man should be. Like, they may have seen their mother in charge. So they may think in, in their mind that it is okay for a woman to be in charge. Like when I was growing up, not me, but for an example, when I was growing up, you know, my mother was in charge, you know, like I did not really have a fatherly figure in my life. Like, actually, I hit my dad because he was not in my life, you know, like he get my mother pregnant, left her, did not take care of me. So I have this hatred toward men. If this is you, if you think in this way or have been through this, your mind needs to be renewed. You need to be healed. You need to overcome what you went through. Just because you have or had, okay, just because you have hatred for a man, just because men have done very bad things to you in, in the past, it doesn't mean you should not follow the Bible when it comes down to marriage. If you have mistrust for men, don't get married. Stay away from men. Like, uh, be, I was going to say be a nun, but I don't know too much about the Catholic Church. But dedicate yourself fully to God and not get married. And I don't think that is a bad thing. 
But if you do choose to get married, just know you have to go by the rules. And if you are a woman, you have to accept, you have to submit to a, a man in everything. Like you have to accept his leadership. And you may say, Uncle Kev, what if the man is bad? What if, you know, blah, 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 blah. Before you marry the man, make sure you do your homework and try to figure that man out as much as possible before you marry that person this is why you should probably not rush to get married in a sense but let me stop here may god bless us